happy that you are joining us for tonight's webinar sponsored by Chesapeake's 4-H. For those who may not know, the 4-H program provides practical experiences in trustworthiness, respect, responsibility, fairness, caring, and citizenship. Programs usually run from October 1st until September 30th of the following year and provides opportunities for families to experience fun together. Families are able to encourage youth while they learn from both their successes and their failures. At this time, I'd like to introduce our guest, Ms. Jocelyn Pearson, Extension Agent for 4-H Youth Development. I'd also like to announce on behalf of 4-H, 20 of tonight's participants will randomly be selected to receive a pizza garden kit where they can grow basil, oregano, things of that nature for pizza. Winners will be announced via email and will receive the kits at their prospective schools. Tonight's agenda will cover plant structure and needs, garden sites and spacing, beneficial insects and garden pests, followed by healthy eating and a question and answer session. During the presentation, feel free to type in your questions and answer in the Q&A box located at the bottom of your screen. At this time, I'm turning the program over to you, Jocelyn. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. I am so excited to be with you all tonight. Um, 4-H is a wonderful program. It's for youth ages five all the way up to 18 years of age. So we do programs and webinars such as tonight. We work with Chesapeake Public Schools doing programs in the schools. We have summer camps and clubs and after school programs that we do. Um, but this is a perfect time of year to get outdoors. And today was a perfect day to kick off um, tonight's event because it was a beautiful day outside. So I wanna talk to you about gardening with your children. So we all know that it's hard to garden even as adults, but here are some helpful tips to get us started. When you first start to garden, make sure you keep it simple and start small. So it's okay to start with a container garden or um, you know, a little raised bed to start things off to see how things are going, if you really have time for a garden um, and try to get engaged so it doesn't discourage you along the way. You really need to allow your children ownership um, of this project with your assistance. So that doesn't mean that they're in charge of the whole garden, but maybe they go out with you and they water the garden or they're helping weed the garden. That's not always the fun thing to do, but we can make it fun um, with our family involved. So try to get them to check on things, especially when it starts to, you're able to see growth and fruit come. You know, that's an exciting time for your children as well. Please know your gardens never have to be perfect. They're not going to be in a perfect line. Things can be off base. Um, and that's okay because everyone's garden is going to be different and things happen. Um, but you want your children to experience that chance of trying to garden and, you know, dig the holes and try to lay everything out with you. You know, it's important to kids like to see things happen. And sometimes these garden plants that we, we plant, there's a lot of time in between. So try to plant things that might grow, grow right away. If you plant some radish seeds, they usually you can see something happening, you know, within a week. So it's a very fast turnaround so they can actually see something take place. I also recommend that you try to plant visible and tactile plants. So you want to see different things, but you want them to be able to see the different textures and the smell. So when you're planting different herbs, for example, you are able to, um, you know, rub the leaf and be able to smell um, the different herbs um, in your garden. And that's important. And if by chance you decide to plant even a flower garden, like lamb's ear has a very soft texture, um, you know, the lavender you can smell as well. So those are the things that just to try to think about. And take advantage of the teachable moments. You know, not everyone, it's not always a quick, quick, let's water and move inside. Um, but, ex, you know, talk and teach your children about why things are growing, why things are struggling. We all know here in Chesapeake, sometimes we have many days that we don't get any rain, um, you know, and the sun is bright and it's very hot out. So they might cause some issues. Show that things are blooming or there's a little um, tomato coming on your plant. 
um, the produce and, you know, and fruit and do those teachable moments and get them excited to be able to check those plants um, and be flexible and have fun. You know, this is truly a time and a great opportunity for you to enjoy time as a family. Maybe there are plants and vegetables that you're not a fan of. <laughs> um, we all have those, but maybe you try to teach them just so they can have that experience and try those out. Um, but it's something that we really want you to just get out outdoors, um, have fun, get away from the computer um, and do that. Can you, can you go back one more? Are we going a little too, uh, too ahead of time? Let's see, yeah, let's back out. There we go. It's okay. Um, we can go to slide eight, I think it is. There you go. There we go. Okay, perfect. All right. We all know that we have to be flexible with technology and we've learned, all of us have learned that in the last year for sure. Um, so let's talk about plant structures. Many of you might do gardening already in your home, um, you know, and that's, that's awesome, but we really want to make sure that the kids understand the plant structures. So we all know that plants have roots so talk to your children about them so why are roots important so roots have a, allow soil surfaces and the essentials to the plants and there's two different types of root structures that we have so there's called tap roots which is like one primary root and you can really see that on certain vegetables such as carrots and beets and turnip so you see that single white root that just comes um, and even when you go to the grocery store, sometimes when you see them in the um, the farmer's market, you see the leaves and then like the beets, and then you see that one root. Um, and that's called the tap root. And then there's the fibrous roots. And they are many, many, and they're similar in size. So think of it as tomatoes and lettuce. So there's gonna be a lot of different things that you're gonna see with those. And those tiny little hairs that you see on these plants, and when, when we plant later, you're gonna see them, it allows them to bring up water and any nutrients that we have in the soil so the plants can grow um, successfully. You know, roots are anchors to plants um, and healthy roots help to bring, they're really plump and white when you see them. Um, sometimes when you see, the, see roots and they're really slimy and brown, they're probably not the best roots going on. So you might have an issue. But share this experience with your children. Let them pick something up, let them look at it. You know. 4-H is all about experiential learning and trying to find things out and experiment different things. And, you know, this is what we want to talk about. And you see here, like, there's a lot of roots to, um, you know, carrots and turnips, sweet potatoes um, and beets that we mentioned. Then we have the stem structure. So this is truly the backbone of any plant that we have. It supports the plant and it transports the water and the nutrients up um, through the plant. So xylem transports the water and the minerals, and then the phloem carries the food that the, is manufactured by the plant. So a lot of times when kids see different vegetables, they're like, oh, it's just a vegetable and that's not cool. But with celery specifically, you know, that is a stem and you can actually see different things and do science experiments with them as well um, to do that. You can take a little bit of food coloring with your celery stick and put it in water and you can actually see the water coming up through the celery stalk um, so they can experience how the water gets through. So there's a lot of neat and fun things that you can do. So the leaves are, the leaves are really important to all the plants, but we do eat plants that are leaves. So parsley, basil, chard, spinach, you know, lettuce, all those type of things, basil, they're leaves that we do eat and use every day, you know, when we cook. Um, but they are truly, they transport light energy into the plant for the energy and they allow, the leaves help the plants stay cool as they go, as you know, the plant is growing. So they're very important, even the leaves on the tomato plants and anything like that. But you know, again, explain to the children that, you know, parsley is a leaf, um, you know, that we eat. And then there's the flowers. And I always find that this is, this is interesting um, for the children to understand too, is that the flowers are 
very unique and they don't realize that broccoli and cauliflower is truly a flower from a plant. Um, and it's like the showy highlight um, that attracts usually birds and insects when you think of it, when you're talking about um, a flower garden, but as well as broccoli and cauliflower are plant structures as well. Now the fruits, there's always a debate if it's a fruit or a vegetable. Um, <laughs> and that's always a debate that's been happening. But so fruits are tomatoes and cucumbers, peppers, squash, peaches, and apples. And the fruits really develop after the flowers have been fertilized. So that's why, you know, that cute little bee is over there too, because it's really important to have everything, um, you know, have pollen and do all of that as well. And they house their seeds inside. So if a child was to cut open a tomato, a cucumber, a squash, you know, even a peach, their seeds are inside. They're not out. Um, they're very uh, much inside and they differ depending on what, um, what fruit that you are cutting with your children. Now seeds, um, everyone usually thinks of pumpkin or sunflower seeds, but peas, beans, and corn and oats are also seeds that are plant structures. Um, and they can be spread by the wind. Um, a lot of times, even the seeds from a tree, you can see, especially now with all the pollen blowing around, you can see that the seeds are, are coming for, down from the trees and they're gonna germinate into new plants. So sometimes you see things that pop up in your yard that you weren't expecting, um, but that's because the wind and the birds have transferred them. All right, so it's really important. The plant has needs just like we have needs as um, humans to um, you know, have housing and food and nutrients, the plants do too. And what I really like is this, um, this chart right here, because if you spell out the word plants, this is everything that a plant needs. So first it needs its place. So whether it's in the ground, whether it's in a container, um, whether you do it in a window box, however you do it, it has a place that it can grow. Then it has light. So obviously, you know, some of our, even our house plants are a little seedling. Sometimes it's artificial light and sometimes it's sunlight. So those are kind of things that, you know, just depending on where you are, the plant needs air. It needs that oxygen and carbon dioxide to grow and, you know, to produce the fruits and vegetables that we want. Then we need those nutrients. So we need to have those um, in-depth nutrients that come in the soil and sometimes depending on if you have soil that is um, low um, in like say it's got too much um, potassium or anything like that, you may have to add a specific nutrient to kind of make the pH level okay. Um, but those are things that you know we really wanna look for. And thirst, I know it sounds silly, but plants are thirsty because of the water. And this is one of the most important things that sometimes gets left aside that plants do need the water to survive and to grow. Um, and it really allows the plants to stay cool and hydrated. Um, and especially if you go out in the yard today, I noticed on my way home when I came into the house that a lot of my plants were looking a little sad today because it was so hot out. So obviously um, they're a little thirsty. And then you need good quality soil. So we have great soil here in Chesapeake, but sometimes everyone's neighborhood's a little bit different. So you wanna make sure that um, the soil is there for the plants to grow and to build roots in. If you're having trouble growing the plants, you can always do a soil test and we'll talk about that a little bit later, but you can do the soil test to see what kind of um, nutrients you need to add um, to make your soil um, good growing for your plants. All right, so when you think of a garden site, it doesn't matter um, if you live in an area that has a big space or a little space, it's all in what is feasible for you and your family. So you want to make sure that your garden is accessible. You don't want to be upset that you have to go down, I don't know, to the backyard, off the deck, or go into, um, you know, go through many different gates to get to your garden, or even have trouble getting to your little patio or anything. You want to make sure it's easy, accessible, that you can enjoy it and get outside and do different things. You also wanna make sure, especially when you're starting to plant a vegetable garden, you wanna make sure you're able to get six to eight hours of sunlight each day. 
So that's something just to think about um, and you know um, what would work for your, for your area. You wanna have loose and well-drained drained soil and you wanna have your tool storage nearby. So I'm not saying you have to have an entire cabinet or an entire shed of tools, but the most important thing would be, you know, something to water the plants with. Um, maybe it's something to, um, you know, a little scissors to remove the vegetables or clippers or anything like that. You wanna make sure that they're nearby and obviously you wanna make sure there's safety for the children to, to make sure that the children are safe as well. But you wanna be able to just quickly grab that water um, you know, and pour it in and move on and enjoy whatever is taking place. So there's a lot of different things that you can do, but depending on where you are, um, it's really important that you just have everything ready because we're all busy and we all have busy lives and we want to enjoy um, time out. So sometimes it's hard if things aren't right there um, for you to participate with. All right, so garden spacing. And I picked these three specifically because these items will be in those lovely um, pizza garden um, kits. So a normal regular tomato, so one of those larger tomatoes, you really need two feet of space. Um, in the garden kit that you will receive, if you receive it, they're actually patio. They are actually patio tomatoes. So it's really important, and I'm gonna bring this up to the camera, that you read whatever tag is in your vegetables, especially so you know, um, it's sort of like reading a recipe. You want to know exactly what the ingredients are and what you're going to need and how long it will take. This is how you understand exactly how much space this plant needs. Does it really need sun? How long is it going to take to grow um, and all of that? So make sure you check those out. Our patio tomato tomatoes are only going to take 70 days to mature and we only need... Um, about two inches apart. So that is nothing compared to the two feet, but it is a little different. So peppers usually need four to five inches, and then basil needs about 10 to 12 inches to grow. So we all know that um, you can grow these in containers, so you could have a specific um, container for different herbs, and that's fine. You could have a window box of herbs, and that is okay too. Um, it's whatever you wish to do. Um, you know, with your family and try different things and experiment with, I don't know, a hot pepper versus a regular green pepper and see how it grows. Um, that's the fun part of everything. So one of the things that we all want to know is what about those insects? You know, we none of us like to see a lot of insects on our plants, <laughs> um, but there's a, some very good insects. So beneficial ones are the ladybug, the prey mantis, a lacewing, a butterfly, we have the bee, um, a wasp, the earthworm, the pill bug, and even a dung beetle. So obviously, you know, we have some great pollinators that are out there pollinating our plants and doing all those. And then the beneficials are really helping the plants, um, you know, work through different things and, um, you know, help them to have success in growing versus taking things away. And then those garden pests. There are a lot of them and a lot that you're gonna see specifically with this garden bag, you probably won't see too much of, but we wanna make sure that you know that it's okay um, if you have pests to take care of things. So obviously the corn earworm and the tomato hornworm, they're really pests to the tomatoes. They like the tomato plant more than any other plant. Um, you have spider mites and aphids and um, a cucumber beetle is really focused more on the cucumber and the squash variety of plants. Um, the squash vine borer is very specific to just the squash. Um, the grub worm and the pill bug, they like to eat the roots and they go under and try to um, eat different roots. So even though you think things are going great, um, it, it does change and affects the, you know, affects underneath. So this is, you know, this is something that we all have um, eventually sometimes in our household, but there is help out there. So I want you to know that we have in my office volunteers that are specific master gardener volunteers. So they've gone through an intensive training program and internship with us, and they actually have a help desk. 
So they have, they answer any questions that you could have. So if you take a picture of a random bug that you've never seen on your on your plant, you can take a picture and email it to them and they and you can say, I'm not sure what this is, what do I do? Um, and they will give you the advice. So it could be a beneficial or it could be a pest, but they're gonna give you that advice. Um, if you're having trouble with your plants um, struggling and growing, they might suggest a soil test. And at our office as well, we have the availability through Virginia Tech to um, do a soil test for you. Um, there is a slight cost, but everything, and it comes back with a very scientific report that they can work through to help you with your needs, whether it's a garden or the lawn or anything like that. So even though you know we do see them, um, a lot of these items on the garden pests, if you get the bat, you know, the kits tonight, you probably will not see them during that duration. But if you're planting a larger garden, there's a strong possibility that you might see them eventually, you know, during your garden season. So I wanted to talk about healthy eating and wellness because I feel like that's important as well. And research has proven that children are more willing to try eating fruits and vegetables that they grow themselves because they think it's fun. It's not something that you've taken out of the refrigerator and say, let's try, but it's something that they're willing to um, try and eat different things. Um, I've done a lot of programs with the gardening um, project and we've done taste tests and kids have never tried some of these vegetables before, but because we did a garden at their location, um, they were more willing to try them they might not have liked them so well, but they did try them um, to show that, you know, um, to see if they did like them because sometimes they hear it and they're like, nope, but other times they just wanna try to do that. Um, all these fruits and vegetables contain many necessary vitamins and minerals and actually fresh fruits and vegetables are the most nutrient, has the most nutrients. So yeah, it's awesome that, you know, we eat and, you know, I do this too, you know, you're on the run, you're trying to get from one place to another, you put something in the microwave and you steam it, that's fine too. Um, but those fresh fruits and vegetables contain the most nutrient content. And I think, you know, it's not really healthy eating, but, you know, after the last year that we've been in the pandemic, it's really important to get your children up and moving and get out, get a little exercise and do the gardening project. And it really helps with their mental wellness because they're enjoying the sunshine and doing something with all of you and your family. That's something that's really important um, in being part of the garden and, and trying different things. And, you know, having that time that you can have a conversation and they're, they're not on their cell phones or on their computers um, worrying about what's coming, what's coming up next or on the TV and things like that. So I have some fun activities that I would like to share. Um, when we do talk about um, the vegetable gardening project. So I mentioned a taste test, and that is something that you can do very easily um, at very low cost as well. So you can try different vegetables, um, different fruits, and um, just, you know, we've asked them questions like, what do you think it looks like? Was it sweet? Was it tangy? Would you eat it again? You know, those kind of things um, and do it you know, do that kind of thing. We've also done fun things too, where we've had this fruit and vegetable beauty contest to see which fruit is, looks the best. Um, but which one, then we actually say which one tastes the best. So we all know like some of the more tropical fruits out there, they're not the prettiest things that we see in the grocery store or at the farmer's market. Um, but they really taste very good. So it's not always, you know, it's not always what you see on the outside. It's the taste and, and then explain to them why things are different. Like some of the, um, you know, a kiwi is a little, um, has some, you know, outside, I call it fur, but you know, outside um, on it, you know, but a cherry does not, but it has like that waxy feeling on it. So just try to, you know, have that fun. You can also, we talked about the plant structure, give your children, depending on their age, so they can sort into different categories, whether it's, you know, um, a stem or a flower and kind of review that. And then just a fruit and vegetable activity. You know, even when you're going through the grocery store, is this truly a fruit or is it a vegetable and why? 
you know, there's always that opportunity to make things fun. Um, I know growing up, I always had to go to the grocery store with my parents and it wasn't always the best um, experience sometimes because you were tired and you're walking around the store, but you can make it fun um, if you have the time to do so. And take time to visit a grocery store, a farmer's market, or even um, a local farm and see what they have and, in, in, you know, varieties they have, even if it's just to visit, to see different things, to see how things are grown um, and talk to the farmers and, and see, you know, why they just decided to plant um, a variety of tomato versus this variety of tomato. Um, so there's a lot of different activities you can do. I just really encourage you all to you know, be a part of, you know, experience with your children and get outside. Um, and they're very inquisitive. You know, the kids are awesome. They're very inquisitive and they want to learn more. Um, and sometimes they know the answer because they've learned it in school. But there's a lot of opportunities out there that um, you all can learn together. So I do want to um, also show you a little bit about planting before we get to the questions. So I'm going to just move my camera. So we're gonna make the best of things. So I'm going to come up to the camera. So here I have a pack of three lovely tomato plants. And like I said, um, in the kit, we're gonna have patio tomatoes. And it's it's interesting because you plant tomatoes a little bit differently than you plant other, veg, you know, other vegetables and fruit. So I have my makeshift garden table here in my house here. Um, so I don't get soil on um, my keyboard but you wanna have a place. So right now I just have this lovely um, container of soil and we wanna make sure that we're ready. Um, so we have our container in our place and we're only gonna plant one of the patio um, tomatoes. So I'm gonna carefully tip it over and pull it out and you all are gonna be able to see, all right, I'm gonna carefully do this. So you're all gonna be able to see all the different roots. You see how all the roots are very tied up and they're having a little struggle. So what I want to do is we really need to, all right, I'm gonna put it back here. So are they, if you think about it, we talked about they white roots. So these are very good plants because they are white roots. And they, we talked about how fibrous it is. So it's not just one root. So we really what we call, we really want to try to spread out and break this up a little bit. You're not going to go too too crazy. So I'm going to just put my cup right here for a second. So you want to kind of break it up to separate the roots because it has been in this container. It looks like for a long time. Um, so I am just spreading it just a little bit for you. Um, and then you're going to be able to see, see how everything is spread out. So it's really going to do um, great things. Now, specifically with tomato plants, you want to take the first, you want to break off the leaves that are on, the, on this up to about here, because we're going to actually plant the stem a little bit more into the soil than we normally would. And this is because, you know, tomatoes get a little heavier than <laughs> they needed, but it's going to build the structure so the root system can go in. So obviously you're going to put a, dig a little hole here in your bucket and you're going to go in and you want to put the soil all right i'm trying to do this makeshift here so you want to make sure that the soil is up to to this point in the container so it may take some digging in the container to move things around All right. All right, so here is my lovely tomato plant and it is in here. Um, and the next thing you really wanna do is make sure that you put some water on there as well. So it looks like to me when I was opening the, um, the roots a little bit, it's very dry. So we wanna make sure that we do um, water it as well. And then you'll have the, the container. So always when you're planting um, from, from a plant for the vegetables and gardens, make sure that you, um, you know, release those roots a little bit to um, help gain the this, um, safety of the roots to grow and the sturdiness of those. If you're planting by seeds, it's really important too that you are 
working to verify what the package says and follow those guidelines as well. Um, but it's so much fun to have your own garden and to try your own produce and to say, oh, I made this myself, but you didn't make it, but you all grew it. So how cool would that be to have that as part of your summer program with your family? Okay, Jocelyn, it looks like we have um, a couple of questions. Okay. The first one is, uh, what is a good resource for finding plants that grow quickly? That's a great question. So um, the, actually the Virginia Corporate Extension um, office can certainly help you with that depending on what garden you wanna grow. Um, and we can give you the resource um, you know, um, to provide whichever. I know radishes grow very quickly. Um, per the seed and you know the tomatoes are going to take a little bit longer obviously the herbs go very quickly but the office the master gardeners can assist you with um, those projects and I, if you want to call the office or shoot me an email I can direct you to them as well. Okay and then someone wanted to know what the beneficial garden insects were again. I do I have them in front of me. The beneficial ones? The beneficial ones. Yeah, so they are um, the bees, a wasp, a butterfly, even a ladybug, um, prey mantises. Um, you know, those are really beneficial. So if you see a prey mantis in your garden, you really want to leave it. Um, and they do make nests in your garden. Um, so you, if you see kind of like a weird, it looks like a very larger wasp nest, it's actually a prey mantis nest. Um, and then they're going to, um, you know, hatch. So you have um, the butterflies, the bees, um, even the dung beetle because they're eating things um, in the soil. Earthworms are really great, um, beneficial. Um, they're working the soil as well. And um, so if you see those, you don't want to get rid of them. Um, you wanna keep them in your garden. Okay, um, and the last question I have is, what is the best way to treat your plant if it gets infested with insects? Very good question. <laughs> um, so I think it depends on what plant it is, depending on what um, insect it might be. So we can, you know, the we can make recommendations depending on what plant it is. So if you have issues, feel free to call the extension office, and we'll be able to assist um, at any point. We always have someone in the office. Okay, um, that is. Oh, can cabbage be saved after green worms have eaten it? I don't know that answer, but I can find out. <laughs> okay, that, um, that's, it. that's all the questions I have. Please. Okay, thank you. Wow, we had a lot of great questions. Um, I'm curious to know about the cabbage too. That's pretty interesting. Um, well, Jocelyn, thank you so much. And I want to just go over your email again. Um, it's J-O-C, is it your whole name, correct? No. Uh, Jay Daly. <laughs> yes. Sorry. <laughs> you want to tell us your email address again? I sure will. So it is um, Jay Daly. So D-A-I-L-E-Y at cityofchesapeake.net. But if you forget it and you're, you know, you're driving along and you're like, I can't remember email. If you look up Virginia Cooperative Extension, we are actually located in the school's planetarium building. Um, so we're right there um, in the planetarium building, and um, we'll be happy to look at your questions, answer anything you have. Um, if you have interest in doing more things with your children or joining 4-H or just having opportunities, um, you can certainly give us a call as well. Um, but we do have a great resource. We have about 100 master gardeners in the city of Chesapeake right now that are um, very active and always willing to um, assist the citizens that we, you know, we serve. So there's always that opportunity. Thank you so much. And I, my partner has put up the email for everyone to see um, again. So I want to thank Mrs. Pearson for this engaging webinar. We've learned a lot. Um, we hope families are ready to be and motivated to start gardening really soon. Um, it looks like each one of our participants today will earn a garden kit. So we will get in contact with you um, sometime this week and uh, get those kits out to your schools. We hope that you join us for our next 4-H series where we'll be canning jams and jellies. Perfect for strawberry season.
This webinar has been recorded and will be uploaded to Chesapeake Public Schools YouTube channel within the next few weeks. Thank you for joining us this evening. And remember, families and communities work better together. Thank you.